We are live with Lunch Break Live. Take it away, Felicia. Hey, we are going to start cooking with almost everything. An onion. Let's get it chopping up, folks. So um, I always have what I have called my veggie bowl, and I keep it right off to the side. And so you may not necessarily be able to see it because I keep it off, off camera. But I just call it my veggie broth bowl because I always make my own homemade veggie broth. And that is, that's, I never buy broth ever in my life. So I just stick the, the odds and the ends of the onions right in here. You're going to see me do the garlic pieces in there later. So I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my stove cooking. I want my, I want my pot to be waiting for me nice and hot. So when we put these diced onions in there, it sears them and shh, that awesome sound. I love that sound. All right. Well, my name is Felicia Slattery, by the way. And today I thought, you know what? It is time. It's that time of year. It's, you know, the people in fashion, they have sweater season. Yeah, I have soup season. <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? Who doesn't love soup? So Sadie loves soup, too. She's she's going on about it. Very excited dog. Um, she gets excited when I get excited. So anyway, so I got my, uh, I got my onion here. And we are going to be making, one second. We are going to be making a pumpkin soup. So we're going to start with pumpkin soup because this is the time of year. Now, listen, here's the thing. If you don't love pumpkin or don't want to use pumpkin, you can use anything. You can use butternut squash. You can use acorn squash if you want, like whatever. So um, whatever kind of, of squash you want to use for the soup. But I make pumpkin soup and I do it. Um, I do it. We don't, I don't make a ton of it in my house. I make it around once a year or so uh, around Halloween when my girls were little. Right now they are, how old are they? They are 19 and 16. So when they were little and before they would go out trick-or-treating, we used to live in the Chicago area where it was always cold and almost always rainy. And so I wanted to send them out with a warm bowl of something delicious. So I sent them out with a bowl of this delicious pumpkin soup in their little bellies and they just absolutely loved it my now now my 19 year old college daughter when she came home for fall break she said mom will you make some pumpkin soup I was like you know I will girl so I made my older daughter some pumpkin soup and she just absolutely loved it so all I'm doing is I am dicing this onion and getting it cut up very finely because we're not going to puree this. Now, listen, if you want your soup super, um, super pureed at the end, you absolutely can do that. In my house, we like it. We like it a little bit rustic. So this is just my way to get the onion over to the over to the pot. So it's just another little flexible cutting board. So I just diced up the onion and you can make it as small as you like or as large as you like. Um, I like it just kind of a small dice, I guess, is what I would say. And I'm going to drop it in the pot here. All Welcome right. to Lunch Break Live, everybody. We are with Felicia Slatterly, an expert in the kitchen with two fantastic cookbooks. We're going to hear about those in a little bit. Tom Vincil, a regular who loves to watch our show, is asking, have you ever used a carnival squash? He saw one yesterday and wondered what to do with it. What are your thoughts? Ooh, no, I have not. I've never even heard of a carnival squash. So now I have to go out and find one. Thank you. <laughs> I'll have to check out at the farmer's market near us and see. All right. So now I'm just taking the garlic. And sometimes when you get a yucky piece of the garlic, you see that? Ew, yuck. So I'm just going to pull that off. That one is not going to go in my veggie broth bowl. That little piece of garlic is going in the garbage. So that'll go in the garbage later. But I'm just going to take. So these are four ginormous cloves of garlic. If your cloves were more normal size, you might use six cloves. I love garlic in this. It really gives it a nice extra flavor. Otherwise, it's like you're just eating a big giant bowl of pumpkin, which, you know, pump, there's nothing wrong with pumpkin on its own, but you want it to taste like some, like soup, right? So that's why there's a whole large onion. You saw that was a really big, there was a lot of onion in there. And then I'm using my garlic. And these are the big seasonings here that are going to go into my soup. And I'm just chopping off the, the woody ends here and putting them in my veggie broth bowl for later. And then I'm just going to kind of pile my garlic up here. And I can hear my onions behind me going, yay. 
Love that. That's like one of my favorite sounds. Oh, I love it. Listen, here's a, here's a little trick for you. So if you're ever, you know, not really sure what you're making for dinner and, you know, so you know somebody's going to be coming home, walking in the door and saying, hey, what's for dinner? Here's your, here's your little tip. Put, a, um, put an onion in a pot and let the onion start to cook. You don't even have to know what you're making. I mean, like almost everything good starts with an onion. You know what I'm saying? For dinner anyway. And so um, get that onion starting to cook. And when somebody walks in, they're like, mmm, it smells so good in here. What are we having? It's a surprise to everybody. <laughs> so there's your little fun tip about an onion because it just, they smell so fragrant and so amazing. So I am just mincing this garlic. Now, if you have one of these garlic mincers, you can feel free to use it. I generally default to my chef's knife and my cutting board because... I find something very therapeutic and really, um, I don't know, meditative about chopping and mincing vegetables. So I just love this. This is one of my creative outlets in my life. And so I just spend the time doing it. I also am a little bit lazy and I can't stand cleaning out the little dots of here, you know, the little hole. Like, ugh, yeah. the butt. So, well, and the thing of it is, is that you have been cooking since you've been in high school. I hear probably earlier, but I hear you took every course that you could on cooking. I don't even know if they offer them anymore, but also you worked in restaurants through high school and college. And then what is this? You took cooking classes in Paris, France at Le Cordon Bleu. Oh my I goodness. Did. I so, did. I mean, so I yeah, back when I went to high school in the eighties and early nineties, uh, or in late, late eighties, sorry, I went to college in the early nineties. I, um, I'm just dumping in all this garlic. Look at all that. Woo, yeah. Um, in the garlic goes. So I, um, I did. I took every class, every class you could take for cooking. And when I got to the end of my senior year, I was at a point where I had to decide, am I going to go down the path of cooking or am I going to go down the path of communication and public speaking? Well, I got a scholarship to be on a speech team and I had worked in kitchens in high school and I knew how much hard work that was. And I, I told you I'm a little lazy, so I don't love it. I don't love working in the kitchens like all those crazy hours and stuff. So I said, you know what? Communications it is. So that's what I did. And it was great. And then when I went away to college, um, I got to, I did a, to study, a study abroad semester and I went to Paris and I had some friends and they were like, Hey, we're going to take this cooking class at the Cordon Bleu. Like it was, it, so I wasn't like an admitted Cordon Bleu, you know, fancy hat chef person. I'm a home cook. I'm a mom. That's what I do. But, uh, I was, I, we took these classes together and it was so fun. So we were like these young, I was like maybe 19, 20, 20 something, you know, a little bippy. And we were in there with all these ladies who are like my age now. Right. And so we were in there with all these, these like Home, just home cooks, French home cooks. And they were all, we were all taking our little notes and making our food on our stations. And it was just super fun. So anyway, that's my story. Yeah. All right. So in the pot, everybody, if you're just joining us, you have the onions and the garlic. Now, are you putting any oil in there or are you just using water? Tell us about this. So I don't, I'm, I generally avoid salt, oil, sugar in my recipes. Um, more, sugar and oil than, than salt. I still use a little salt, but anyway, so in that pot, so this is a nonstick, um, this is a nonstick ceramic coated, uh, cast iron skillet. So I just drop those onions in. There's no oil at all. So zero fat in this recipe so far, but don't worry, I'm going to add the fat in just a little while. I promise you that. So, <laughs> all right. So now once our onions are kind of going, they're translucent, I'm going to drop in, I've got four cups of broth. And again, this is my, this is my homemade veggie broth. I just made it the other day and that is going to go right in. And then comes the star of the dish. We're going to do pumpkin. And I just have two 14 ounce cans of pumpkin here. doesn't matter what brand. Can you use fresh? Sure you can. But you know, if you're looking for a recipe that's really quick that you can make right at the end of like at the end of a busy day, and you're thinking, I don't know what I'm going to have. Or you want a quick lunch in the, in the middle of the day, like we're doing here. Well, depending on where you live. Um, but if you want a, you know, quick, a quick, quick meal, this comes together. I mean, you saw, I started chopping this onion when we went live. And by the time we're done today, this soup will be ready to go. So, I mean, it's fast, including all of the prep time. So I'm just getting all of the pumpkin out of my cans. And in it goes. And so again, very simple recipe, really easy. We rely on the onions and the garlic, those aromatics 
are going to give this pumpkin soup just a really delicious flavor. Of course, along with the pumpkin, the beautiful orange color, you're going to love that. All right, so I am going to just stir this in. If you wanted to whisk it, you could whisk it, but at this point, I don't feel like I need to do that. I'm just going to stir in my pumpkin and my onions, garlic, and broth, and I'm just going to bring that up to a boil. So I'm going to actually move it to a different, uh, I'm going to move it to my, my um, burner in the middle of my stove here. Now, if you're just joining us, we are with Felicia Slatterly. Yes, she is a successful author of eight books. We're going to see two of her cookbooks shortly. They're amazing. And I want to say, oh, here they come. Here they um, come. We also have the question, are you using coconut milk, which we're going to get to. But look at these. These are instant pot and slow cooker. Yep. Y'all check this out. We're going to give you the link and you're going to be able to get this book for you. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Hey, yeah. you mentioned some homemade veggie broth. Oh my gosh. Okay. Back to you. Okay. So homemade veggie broth. I make, this is, so all I do is you saw me chop the onion, they pull the onion skins off. I pull the garlic skins off. If I'm peeling carrots or cutting off the, you know, the kind of gross ends of the carrots, throw them in here. Um, sometimes if you buy carrots that have the, the, the fronds on them still, some people will use those in salads and things, which are great. But if you don't know what to do with them, I just throw everything into my veggie broth bowl. When I use, um, I always have peppers, bell peppers of some kinds, and I put my bell peppers, the um, the seeds and the and the stem, they all go in my veggie broth bowl, and then I just throw them in my freezer in a bag. In fact, my bag is right here, and in this bag, I've got some so the outside cabbage leaves, things like that. I just throw them all in my bag, and when either my bag gets full or my fridge gets my, I get or I get low on broth. I just dump all this in a stock pot, fill it with water, and turn it on and let it boil for a couple few hours. And that's it. You have broth. It doesn't even, it doesn't need to go terribly long. The last ingredient in our soup is going to be this coconut milk. I also believe, let's just see what we got. Um, I also add a little bit of maple syrup. Um, remember I said I was, I made this recipe for my kids. So I always put a little bit of maple syrup for a little extra sweetener. If you don't want your soup to be a little, have that little sweetness to it, you can leave this out. But I always like to add just a little bit. It's about two tablespoons or so there. You guys will get the recipe. So, all right, I'm going to stir that in. Betty Ann Cornwall is asking a very vital question. She yes. has a mini Instapot. Would it work with your cookbook? So maybe the, this particular cookbook was designed with the six quart instant pot in mind. So if depends on what size, how big your mini is, I think the minis are three or four quarts. Um, some of the recipes would work really well. And some of them were kind of full for the regular, the six quart instant pot. So, um, but you can always half the recipe and that's, you know, that's easy to do. And then it would absolutely still work for you. So the, the times don't change. It's just the amount. And uh, the thing with the Instant Pot is you just have to be careful about the amount of food and liquid that you put into the pot. You don't ever want to go over. There's a line in the pot that says maximum fill. That's, they, they're not making that up. Just that's it. Put it to there. And it, you can, But you can definitely go much below. So, for example, I have, um, I have a recipe in there for my gingered collard greens. And like the collards look like they're filling up the whole pot, but you know, anything that's greens always cooks down to nothing. So like that, you can always kind of fill up. If you've got something with cabbage in it, I have a few recipes that have cabbage that you put the cabbage on tippity top. Um, Cause you don't want to put cabbage in, put it in liquid because it gets really wilty. So I just always put it on the top and it says it's all the step-by-steps -step in there. And then they wilt down a little bit, but for the most part, you don't ever want to go above that maximum fill line in your instant pot. All right, so now our soup is working. So what goes what goes better with soup than salad? I mean, I guess maybe a sandwich, but you know, you could always put veggies in a sandwich and call it done. Let's make a nice salad. So I thought let's make a fall harvest salad. How does that sound? Sounds good, right? So I've got three kinds of greens that I am using for my salad today. I have my romaine that I've already cut and put uh, put through my through my salad spinner there. I have baby kale. I'm one of these people that, you know, I'm still, kale still has to grow on me. I don't love it. I don't love the big giant pieces of kale raw. 
And I know if you massage them, they, they're a little bit better, but baby kale, I could do all day long. So I'm just going to put a couple of, of handfuls. Now, it depends on how many people you're cooking for. Right now, I'm going to be the only one eating this salad tonight at my house. Um, my husband's going to go tailgating. My younger daughter is going to be in a play, and they're feeding her before the play. So I'm the only one eating at my house tonight. So I'm not going to make a ginormous salad for myself, but it's going to be like my main meal. So put that together. And then I have the rest of my ingredients here for my salad. And so we've got romaine in the bowl. We have kale in the bowl. And then I'm just going to put some baby spinach in the bowl. And this was from one of those big giant tubs. I just always pull, pull leaves out of my big giant tub and there it is. So, all right, we've got that. Whoopsie. Sadie's getting a piece of spinach and she's going to be happy about that. The truth. All right, so there's that part of my salad. I'm going to dump in just some raisins. If you are a person who is avoiding salt, oil, sugar in your diet, um, do not use dried cranberries. If you don't care and you don't mind a little bit of sugar, or a little bit of salt, then dried cranberries are lovely in this, but I'm going to use raisins because it's just, there's just, they're just dried grapes. It's just raisins in my recipe here. And then I forgot to take something out of my, out of, uh, out of my bag over there and it's a pear and we have to have a pear in the salad. So one moment, I'll be right back with my pear. No problem. And thanks everybody for joining us here on Lunch Break Live. Yes, we are here daily. You're going to find this recipe and thousands of other printable recipes. Where? Where can you find them? Yes, yes, yes. Head on over, head on over to our website. That's right. Thank you so much. And also you're going to find Felicia's website here in link in the chat. We're going to talk more about that in a moment. Thank you so much. Back to you. All right, so I got my pear, and you can use any pear that you want for this salad. I am using a um, a red D'Anjou pear, and so um, you could use a Bartlett pear for this if you want. You can use a Bosque pear. The Bosque pears are kind of like the browner ones. They're beautiful. So I am just cutting around the core of this pear, and um, it's very soft and very ripe, and mm, Mm, so good. Oh my gosh, it's super sweet. I love it. I love it. So, and I'm just going to dice this into nice small pieces and it's going to just pop it right into my salad bowl here. Now, if you're going to make this, you know, if you're going to mix up a lot of your salad things, you can mix up in advance without, and then just don't put the dressing on, right? I would not cut this up too far in advance. Or if you do, you want to just spritz it with a little lemon juice and then you're good to go. So, all right, I am dicing up my pear here and, and then what fruits are in season where you are now and where exactly are you take it away so i live in knoxville tennessee and so um the fruits that i can find in my grocery store right now are probably the same that most of us can find in our big grocery stores right now apples pears um those are those are kind of your big fall really delicious fresh fruits but also dried fruits so you know i mentioned cranberries i mentioned um, I mentioned raisins. You can use, if you want to use figs in this, you can cut up figs in the salad. Oh, they would be good. Dates you could use. You could use dried apricots. I mean, literally any dried fruit is plentiful this time of year. And so really easy to find. But um, yeah, I've got my, we used to go apple picking when my girls were little too. That was another fun little family thing that we used to do. All right. So in my salad, I have the, um, I have my pears. I got my three lettuces. I have my three types of greens, my raisins, and I'm just going to put a little handful of walnuts. So I've got some fresh walnuts or shelled walnuts. This is another, this is another fall thing. So down here in the South, we have a lot of nut trees, uh, a lot of walnut trees and a lot of pecan trees or pecan, if you will, whatever. <laughs> so nuts are very much in season. That's why I call it my fall harvest salad. So in those go. And then I have here, this was a can of chickpeas. And what I did, or garbanzo beans, is I, I'm going to, listen, you hear that? Super crunchy. I roasted them in the oven, but I also have a recipe for them in my cookbook. So my, my slow cooker cookbook, you can actually make these crunchy, they're, I call them um, chickpea snackers, crunchy chickpea snackers, and you can make them sweet or you can make them savory. And they're really great as kind of like croutons in a salad. So I don't love... I don't love the taste of just garbanzo beans and salad with like when they're not 
seasoned or flavored or anything, just dumping them in. Um, so I, I made this up in advance and I love these. And these are just great. These are like a great afternoon snack. You can just crunch on them and they're delicious. And I just season them up with, if again, if you're doing salt, a little bit of salt, uh, a little bit of garlic powder, pretty much garlic on anything is good in my life. Do you know what I'm saying? So, all right, there's that. And then I'm going to go ahead. Now, do you put these in the oven or do you put them in like a, a in a, what's that called? Air fryer. Those garbanzo no, beans. I actually, there's a recipe for, for, put, for doing them in the slow cooker, but for these, they're about 30 minutes in the oven on 400. You just got to dry them off real well. And then once you dry them off, you're good to go. All right. So my soup has about come up to a boil and I'm just going to put my coconut milk in here because we're closing in on the end of this recipe, believe it or not. So that's it. There's my coconut milk. And then I am going to grab, which I think is in here, got some salt. And I'm going to just taste it for salt. Like I said, I use a little bit of salt in my diet, a little bit, of, always pepper, um, but a little bit of salt. So I'm just going to heat this through while I finish up my salad dressing. And I'm going to add my pepper and give that a stir. There we go. You know, if you like the taste of herbs, you could put some fresh thyme in there if you wanted to. That would be lovely. All right. So last part of my salad is I'm going to make my dressing. I always make my own dressings because it's just easy to do. And they're delicious and simple. And this is one of my favorite dressings. This is um, this is based on the Esselstyn's um, 321. So we're going to use one tablespoon. I'll start. I'll go this way. We'll use one tablespoon of maple syrup. Again, there's a little bit of sweetness. I like a little sweetness in my life, don't you? I do. So a little maple syrup, one tablespoon. We're going to do two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. So here's one. Here's two. Again, you saw I started from nothing, right? Like when we got on here. And in 30 minutes, I'm going to have a delicious soup and salad dinner that I made from scratch. All right. And then I've got three of apple cider vinegar. One. Two, if I don't count out loud, I'll lose count. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> three. All right, so there's my three. And you can use any mustard that you like, any vinegar that you like. For this particular salad with the harvest flavors, I'm sticking with the apple cider vinegar. This is, this is probably, of all of them, my favorite. And then I'm just giving this a good shake. Shake it like I mean it. Make sure that lid is on really tightly. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. Boom, 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 boom. All right. And then I'm going to give it a quick taste just to make sure it doesn't need anything. Ooh, that's a little tart. I love that. That little tartness from the, from the Dijon and the vinegar and a little bit of sweetness from the maple syrup. So good. All right, I'm just checking my recipe. Make sure I'm not missing anything. I am not. So I'm going to put just a little bit of pepper on my salad. Not a lot. A little bit of pepper on my salad. And then... I don't think it's going to need any salt. So I'm just going to dress it with my dressing. And I'm not going to use all of the dressing because I didn't remember I'm only cooking for one here. So I probably used about half of that dressing. And I am going to grab my tongs and just give it a nice little toss here. And you can kind of see what I'm doing with my salad. Ooh, so good. And there's some pretty colors in here. And we've got some different textures. I'm just double checking to make sure. Yep, we're good. We got the different textures. Again, super healthy with our three kinds of greens in this salad. All right. And then I'm just going to plate it up. I'm and using we're a little. Say hello to a few people here. We have Klaus coming in from Germany, Tom from Chicago, Tina's in the house, Betty Ann Cornwall. Wow. We have people from all over the planet watching here. We're a global station here bringing to you live and uh, any other questions ask in the chat they um are so excited they got to see sadie she was so cute in there a moment oh, ago did she walked by did you walk by yeah that's my dog she <laughs> it's so funny because my husband is home he's upstairs he's been calling her she's like no mommy's cooking and i'm gonna stay in case she drops any lettuce the dog loves romaine it's her favorite thing in the world it's crazy all right so i am gonna use my pot holder so i don't burn my hand taking the lid off of my soup and it is now just about ready it's pretty much come to a boil but it's done like everything in here is all the way heated through and i am ready 
I'm gonna give it a quick taste. Let me grab my spoon. I'm hoping that you can, some folks just join, just let us know what you have in that pot. Once again, just take us to the, you know, the different ingredients that you layered in. Okay. Mm. I need some salt. So it doesn't have salt yet. <laughs> we have, um, we started with a giant onion. I just chopped that down um, into a fine dice. Then we let that, uh, as that started to saute away, no oil, just in a plain dry pan, which dry sauteing method. Um, if I was using a different kind of pot, I would have dropped in a little veggie, veggie broth to, to make sure it didn't stick. But this was a, this is a, a enamel coated pot. So just the onions. Then I minced up four giant cloves of garlic. If you don't have giant cloves of garlic, use six regular size ones. And then I put them in there. And then I let them go for just a minute while I opened up the pumpkin and I put in the broth. I got four cups of homemade veggie broth. I have two cans, two of the smaller cans of pumpkin, or you can get one of the big giant cans that you can find now in your grocery store. Yes, you can use fresh. Cans are easy and convenient and you can always find them. So uh, I put in my can. I just stirred it all up, put the lid on it. I put in a couple of tablespoons of maple syrup just to give it a little extra sweetness. And then we let it get hot, come to a boil till those veggies, till the onions get soft enough that they're um, that they're good to go and, and eat, taste like soup. And then I added the a can of coconut milk. And that's it. So it is ready to go. Um, I'm going to add a little salt. That was the last thing I remember now. So here's my salt. I'm just going to drop in a little bit here at the end. If you are someone who doesn't use salt, you don't need to use it. Um, you could, if you needed, wanted something a little bit salty, you could put a little miso paste in here without putting salt, you know, if you wanted that little sodium taste to it. So that is my soup. And I'm gonna get myself a nice big bowl. Now, if you wanted to, you could puree this soup and make it a little bit thicker and not have the, um, the pieces of onion in there. I'm gonna turn it off because it's ready to go. But I'll tell you the truth. I like a little rustic soup. I like a little texture. Um, but if you want it to be sauteed, you can be sauteed. Like if I was going to make it fancy and have somebody over who I wanted to, you know, impress or whatever, I might stick my, my little stick blender in there and give it a quick little blend. But this is it. We've got our soup. Let me give it a taste now that I put that. Now that I, well, I'm going to put a little more pepper, a little more pepper on my, my portion. And then I always have in my uh, pantry, I always have some pepitas. These are little, um, these are little pumpkin seed kernels. They're little green types of things. And I just put them on top as a little garnish. They're going to sink. Um, but you can put them on top if you want. If you like, if you're into and, and have a vegan sour cream, you could put a little dollop of your, of your vegan sour cream or a vegan yogurt on there if you wanted to, just plain. But um, for me, I added enough fat from the from the coconut milk. So let's give this soup a taste here. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That looks so savory. And Deborah says nutmeg with mm. some explanation points. Sure, you could definitely put the nutmeg and cinnamons and yes, you can. So that's the thing with the soup. It's like it's a great, it's great as it is, or you can you can spice it up with some nutmeg, with some cinnamon, with some if you want to put a little ginger for another little warm spice. So those are kind of like your pumpkin pie spices. Feel free to dump those in there. That would be delicious. I would probably use about for the size pot, I would use probably about a half a teaspoon of each of those because they're a little bit goes a long way with those seasonings. So anyway, it is delicious as is. That's my soup. And then my salad. Where is my fork? I lost a fork. So I'm just going to eat my salad with my fingers. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, my gosh. Well, everyone is so excited that you were with us. They're asking for more episodes. By all means, you're welcome back. Woohoo! This has been incredible. Can you bring those books up one more time? Because oh, I really yeah. want to give them enough time for people to let it soak in. These are great gifts. Okay. Come on, everybody. Those of you that still have the Instapot in the box, pull it out. Get this book. This is going to be your game changer, right? Yeah. Yes. In fact, in the beginning of the, the, the first chapter of the book, I actually walk you through. And I do confess that mine lived in the box for a while. And then I made rice with it and it burned. Yeah, I burned rice in the Instant Pot. I mean, seriously. And so, so then it sat in the in the closet for even longer. And then I figured it out enough to write a whole cookbook. So I'm just saying, if I can figure it out, so can you. So, And I showed you how in here. So yeah, two awesome, great Christmas gifts. Uh, give them to all your friends and family, even the ones who aren't vegan, because doesn't everybody need a little more vegetables in their life? Yes, they do. 
and Sadie Sadie, agrees. Sadie agrees for sure. (laughs) All right. We're going to go out with one more shot of that delicious soup. Can you bring it up close? Thanks everybody for joining us on lunch break live. We'll catch you next time.